Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. It's great to see you all today. Just have a few announcements to get us going this morning. Um, first of all, there is no consumed youth tonight. Um, there was, well, there's three graduations going on today. West Vigo at one, North at three, and South at five. And so a lot of people want to go to the graduation, so it, the decision has been made for everybody to just uh, go to the graduation, celebrate with your graduates, your friends, anybody, and um, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. So, um, so no consumed youth tonight. Um, the, on the line of consumed youth, they're having a yard sale uh, Friday, July 1st, and Saturday, July 2nd. Guys, it's already June. That's going to be here before we know it. So if you have anything you'd like to donate, please get with Pastor Mike or Hope um, and let them know. We want to have a big yard sale, raise some good money for our kids. Um, they can, the donations can even be picked up if necessary. So even if you've got stuff and you don't know how to get it here, we'll take care of that for you. Um, Heyday Weekend Camp, formerly known as VBS, is coming up uh, just the week after the yard sale. Uh, July 8 and 9, and there's a table back in the back in the foyer that's got sign-ups. Um, there's lots of ways you can help. You can donate items. You can come and help. Um, if you've never done it before, it's, it's fun. The kids are so excited, and it's a wonderful time to share Jesus with them. So consider stepping up and helping out if you can. Uh, we have a motorcycle ride for youth coming up July 16th. Uh, I know a guy that's kind of excited about that. And uh, it's going to be a great time. Um, I, I, I got to tell you, I wish I had a motorcycle. That would be fun. Um, but anyway, I don't, so, and I'm not riding my bike. Um, so anyway, if, you, if you're interested or if you know somebody that might be, um, sign up for that. It's, it, it'll be a great time. Um, SWID District Assembly and Conventions is coming up um, late July. Um, there's a list on your bulletin or on the loop. can tell you all the meeting times and things. Um, it's in Evansville. Um, easy to drive straight south. Check it out. Um, lots, of, lots of good services and, and meetings. Um, I've mentioned it, but the loop bulletin is out there. You can get it. Um, Annette sends out a text every Sunday morning. You can click on that, and it will give you a lineup of everything that's going on in the church. You can sign up for different things. Um, it's a really great service that we have. Um, so tap into that if you have any questions or you're not sure about something. Um, and last but certainly not least, we have the deeper prayer gathering every Thursday at 630. Guys, it's a quiet time to just come in and get on your face with God. Um, it's not a timed thing. They do a little study and then you have some prayer time. Um, if you're available, please come. You'll be blessed. That is all I have. Have a wonderful day, friends. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, can I let you in on a little secret this morning? God is good. God is good. In a world and in a time where it seems like I kind of look around sometimes and I feel like things are going crazy. I do. I feel like things are going crazy. But God is always faithful. Sometimes the people that are in our lives will let us down. They're people, right? We're people. Sometimes our government, right, will let us down. Our economies will let us down. But God is always faithful. Always faithful. So this morning, uh, we want to be faithful with God. We want to we honor him this morning. And so as we begin our time of worship this morning, let's worship God this morning through our tithes and our offerings. Sometimes people think that sounds kind of crazy. How can giving tithe and offering be worship? But it is worship. It is our way of telling the Lord, we trust you. We're faithful to you. And so this morning, let's be obedient to God in that, and let's bring before him our tithes and our offerings. Would you join me in prayer this morning as we pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning. Lord, we recognize your goodness this morning. Lord, we recognize how good and how faithful you have been to us. Lord, we don't, we don't deserve it. 
but that doesn't mean that you don't give it because your goodness goes beyond our understanding. Your faithfulness goes beyond our understanding. And so this morning, Lord, we are thankful for your example to us. Lord, I pray this morning that we will recognize those qualities in you. And Lord, as we strive to be more and more like you, Lord, we will take those things into account and put those in practice in our lives. Your love, your goodness, your grace, your mercy. May each and every one of us be more like you. Lord, as we come, we worship you this morning. Lord, we we elevate your holy name this morning. And Lord, as we begin our time of worship, we worship you this morning through our tithes and our offerings. Lord, I, I'm speaking for me personally, but I, I know some others will relate to this. Things have kind of been going crazy lately. Lord, I, I can look around and it's like everything has gotten more expensive and it, you know, it, it causes some anxiety and some stress. Lord, I I want to be faithful to you this morning because everything that I have, everything that I have comes from you, Lord. You already own everything, but you've asked me to give back just just a portion, just a portion of that which you've given to me. And so, Lord, the desire is to be faithful and bring you the first fruits this morning. And trusting in you, Lord, that you will take care of and you will provide all of those other needs, even despite the way the things that go with our economies. Lord, you're above our economies. And so our faith is in you this morning. So, Lord, I pray that as we bring these tithes and offerings before you, Lord, you will bless the gift and the giver alike. And we pray all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Those those offering plates are here in the front. Uh, if you would, won't you please come? Good morning. Ah, you look good. Maybe, maybe somebody needs to hear that from you. Just turn, turn to your neighbor and say, oh, you look good today. Yeah. Don't, don't, doesn't, that just, doesn't that just make you feel good? Yeah. Yeah, even if it was really hard for whoever told you that to say that, it still makes you feel good. It does. Hey, uh, let's... Uh, Let's invite the kiddos down this way for Sermon in the Sack. Come on, kids. I'll tell you what, Becky could, uh, why don't you just play a little something there? Give them a little, uh, little. I was going to say dance music. Well, we could do that. Come on, kiddos. Come on down this way. Come on. Yeah, give them a round of applause, too. Everybody doing great? School is out. Oh, man. Yeah, life is good when school is out. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, I live, I live for the last day of school. That's right. Good to see you. All right, uh, any, any big vacation, any, any big summer vacation plans that you just can't, can't wait? What, what do you got, Bubby? Can I tell you about myself? Can, I t- can you tell about yourself? Well, we'll, we'll do that later. Okay, all right. What do you got? In a few weeks, we're going to Tennessee. Oh, nice. Yeah, back to the, to the volunteer state, the Vols, right? Is that right? 
Oh, yeah. Anybody else? What, what anything good happening? Yeah, what, what's, what's, what's good that's happening, Lukey? Well, I like it when I'm going to Indiana Beach. After that, Great Wolf Lodge. Woo! That sounds awesome. Can I go? Oh, I can. Oh, wonderful. Oh, you're not going? Oh. <laughs> Well, <laughs> is, that, is that where you hope to go? Oh, you're going to Indiana Beach, though. Okay. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh, all right. that's good. That's good. <laughs> all right. Anybody else? What you going to do? I know. Oh, yeah, you get, you're getting ready to turn one. That's wonderful. Well, good to see you. So, so why, oh, she got something to say? Uh, you think so? We'll see. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, uh, why are we up here, anybody? Yeah, yeah, what do you got? Ah, <laughs> oh, maybe you need one of these at home. Yeah, silence, immediately. All right. Oh. Yeah, the, oh, got a little bit. Good deal. All right. Well, we're up here for Sermon in the Sack, correct? And uh, eldest grandson has brought it today. Say that again. I'd like to see you preach with that. Oh, great. <laughs> A lot of love in the house. All right, let's, let's pray and we'll all be dismissed. <laughs> all right, Lord, thank you so much for our kids. We love them, and it's good to take a few moments with them. And I pray, Lord, that whatever is in this sack, that you would teach every one of us, every one of us, something that we can apply and live in our lives, uh, Lord, to share you with others. So I thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. What? Yeah, keep me safe. Ain't that the truth? Ah, a rock. Thanks for not throwing it at me. A rock. A cement. Oh, even better. This is, uh, this is good. All right, this is, what, this is what the Lord has for every one of you, all of us here. Here we go. But cement, what, what are some of the things that are in cement? Do, you, do your kids know what, what would be involved, what's in cement? Rocks. Rocks, yes. Anybody else? What else you got? Ethan, what, well, what else is in cement? Any idea? Concrete. Uh, yes. Yeah, what, what else is in concrete? Stickiness. What? Stickiness. Oh, I like that. That's good. Got a lot of stickiness in there. there there's also, uh, what, what we got? What we got? Frank, what else, is in, what else is in concrete other than rocks? Gravel. Gravel, yes, good. What, what else? What else is in it? What else, Vinny? What else we got? Lime, limestone. Sure. What else? Water. Water, well, yes. Anything else? <laughs> what else you got? It works on every age. What else? What else is in concrete? What do you got? I was going to say water. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Got some sand in there, too. All right. Good deal. Well, so here's the cool thing. Here's a really cool thing. With the right ingredients, with the right things put together, they become strong. Right? So strong that what, what are you doing over at Graham's and Pop's house? What have you been doing? I smashed some cement down the block. Oh, yes. Been smash, had to smash it to get rid of it. Yes, it takes a lot of strength and power, doesn't it? Yep. So when you have the right ingredients, things become strong. Do you know that God has made some things possible for you and me? That if we have them in our lives... We become strong too. Can somebody say amen to that? God has provided his son Jesus to save us from our sin. So when we get rid of that sin, then God puts himself in us through Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit makes us strong and powerful. And then when we have God's word, what's, God, what's God's word? What's God's word? To love each other as yourself. That's good. Where, where do we find God's word at? In the Bible. That's correct. 
So we've got to have God's word. We've got to have each other. We've got to have the church. We've got to have one another around us to be strong. Adding those ingredients, we can become like concrete. Strong. Strong. Don't ever forget that. Not, but not too strong. Are you sure? Cracked open. Oh, that's, a, that's another thing. we got to make sure that we don't allow things in our lives to crack us up. <laughs> to mess with us. To mess us up. That's good stuff. Good stuff. Make sure you have the right stuff in your life to make you strong. Make sure you have the right stuff in your life to make you strong. Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, God, so much for this reminder today that you, God, have made it possible by providing everything that these children need, everything that every one of us needs, Lord, no matter what our age, to make us strong for you. So, uh, Lord, I pray that you would help us to help one another to be strong in the Lord, to stay true to the Lord, to love one another all the way through. And we give you praise, Lord, again for the reminder that you are the one that can make us strong. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Say, hey, say it again real loud. Amen. amen. Oh, good. Everybody stand together. Let's take a moment and fellowship. Hey, shake a hand or two. Maybe hug a neck or two. That's good stuff. God bless you. Worship this morning, and we're, as we're getting ourselves ready, uh, would you put your hands together and, and welcome another church, new church member to the to the local church uh, family, Michelle Pine? Just kind of wave your hand back. Yeah, just yeah. Give give a round of applause. It's good to, good for the growth of the body of Christ. God bless you. Let's stand together. Let's worship together this morning. Who 
breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole that we're going to sing is called One Thing Remains, Your Love Never Fails. In this world of ever-changing opinions, lifestyles, whatever it is, there's one thing that's always the same. <clears throat> In Psalm 118, 4 through 6, it says, Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? And us says in this that your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out of me. He's never tired. He's never sick. He's, he's always loving, never changes. 
Um, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, and they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Let's continue our worship to the Lord today. Let's praise his name. He is so deserving. that I face stronger than the power of the grave constant in the trial and the change one thing remains higher than the mountains that I
worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, fly in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. This week have had had a long week and you're just you're just wore out. You're just physically, physically tired. I bet I bet some people could say that I've had a long week and I'm just physically wore out. 
I'm sure many of us here in this room could say, you know what, I'm carrying a heavy burden on my heart this morning. There's just something in my life that I can't get peace about. I can't find any rest in my soul about the situation that I'm facing. Jesus said in Matthew 11, starting in verse 28, he says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I noticed there that Jesus didn't say you're going to find physical rest, <laughs> but you will find rest for your souls. So Jesus promises to be with us. He promises to give us rest, but we have to do something. We have to come to him. We have to come to him. So I invite you this morning as we go into prayer, the altar is open. If you have a burden on your heart, if you have something that you are not finding rest in your soul for, the answer is to come to Jesus. He promises to give us rest for our souls. Do you have something you want to say, Brother Dan? Last week, uh, Sunday, I got a call, said that uh, my sister had had a heart attack and that uh, there was heart damage and they were going to send her from the local hospital to Barnes and in, in, in St. Louis. And I, I called and asked the church to pray. And I want to tell you the results of your prayers. She got to Barnes. They done some testing. They said, you didn't have a heart attack. There's no heart damage. No, that was prayer. That was prayer. And I've given God the praise for it all. Glory to his name. you join me in prayer as we prepare our hearts for the message today. Lord, you are great burden bearer. You desire to hear the prayers of your people. You are still in the miracle working business today. You make a way where there seems to be no other way. And there was no other way for us to be reconciled to you unless you first came to us. Our sin separated was such a far separation from us to get to you, Lord. The only way we could be reconciled was through you coming to this earth, to fellowship with us, to walk among your people, to disciple us, to tell us the way to heaven, and that's through you. And so, Lord, we thank you that you're still alive and active today in this world. Hebrews 4.12, the scripture says your word is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It pierces even our souls right down to the joints and marrow. So Lord, we thank you for your word. You are the word. You are the living word who speaks today to us right now. You invite us to come. Anyone who is weary and heavy laden, you invite us to enter into your rest. And so, Lord, I pray today that your people will stand on your promises, that even in those times of walking through the wilderness, in times of testing, in times of great difficulty, that we will rest in your promises. And, Lord, it's not always going to be easy, and many of us can testify to that, that being a Christian is not easy Jesus said there's going to be times when people will hate you because of me, that there will be times of persecution because you believe in me. But Lord, you've given us everything that we need in this life, everything that we need to stand on your promises. You've given us your Holy Spirit. You've given us the gift of salvation. 
You've given us the church. You've given us your word. Lord, you give us everything that we need. So, Lord, I pray in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of trials, in the midst of burdens, that we can see off into the future. As the writer to the Hebrews told the Christians in Hebrews chapter 4 to be looking off into the future, you have a hope waiting for you ahead. And so, Lord, in the here and now, as we face trials, as we face challenges day to day, let us be faithful to your word, to stand on your promises and to find rest in Jesus. So, Lord, today I pray for those who are restless in their souls, no matter what they're facing, maybe it's with a relationship or maybe they've been laboring in a ministry for many years and they haven't seen any results or whatever it is, Lord. Maybe it's a physical restlessness. Lord, may you give us the peace that only comes through you. And Lord, I pray as we continue on in the service to be with Pastor Denny as he preaches. None of us are here today by accident. Lord, may your worth go forth and may we respond in a way that honors you. Lord, as we leave here later on, as we go out into the mission field, may we invite people to come to Jesus, who is the one who can only provide true rest for their souls. And may we be salt and light in this decaying and dying world. May we be a city set on a hill that shines forth the glories of Jesus Christ. And Lord, may this time of worship and preaching and singing and giving be done all to glorify your name. Lord, we're here for you and we're here because of you. And as we leave here today, may each one of us say we have met with Jesus in some way. Lord, we love you. We thank you for everything you've done for us, everything that you can continue to do for us and everything that you promise to do for us in the future. Bless your people on this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise his holy name. Amen. Oh, my. Um, appreciate, uh, appreciate the update, brother. Good testimony of what God can do. Uh, let, me, uh, let me just give you a little bit of a, a praise, too. Uh, I guess it would be a lot of one. Um, uh, my sister, I've got one sister. Um, she's a couple, uh, two and a half years younger than me. Uh, for quite some time, she's, uh, she had a, uh, a lump, some kind of a growth on her arm, and she finally got in to be checked out. And the doctor told her that she had the worst kind of cancer she could have. And because there was, uh, it had been such a long time, uh, it, had, it would no doubt be sp spreading throughout her whole body. So she lives in Tennessee, and they doctors sent her to Vanderbilt University, which, uh, if you know in those parts, that's a pretty good place to go to get some answers. And, uh, but he told her, he said, I want you to know, when, once they check you out, uh, the results are not going to be good. We've got to just know where things are. She went in there on Friday, got checked out, results came. There was no cancer in her body. Contained, contained, it had not spread throughout her body, contained in the arm. She's got some surgery to go through. But, uh, boy, to hear one thing, to be the worst, to find out it's not quite that way. Um, God doesn't always work out things that way. God still is in charge no matter how things go. He still is the miracle worker. He still is the way maker. So sometimes, sometimes God does things, allows things, not to provide a miracle for a solution, but provides a way for the outcome. Are you with me? God will provide resources, provisions. He will open up things so that the journey can continue so that the testimony of the one that's receiving God's directive hand, it will provide a way through so we can say, I, I still got this disease, but he's my way maker. 
I, I'm still dealing with the pain, but he's providing a way through. I don't know why things are happening the way they're happening, but my God is still, still on the throne. He's still orchestrating this whole thing. It's going to have a great outcome. Praise God. Why are you still sitting there? Come on, stand with me here. Victorious, the victorious word of God. We continue in this series. Read this with me. All this is good stuff. Good stuff. Why wouldn't it be? It's God's word. Verse 13 of Exodus 14. Read with me. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Hey, turn to your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Yeah. Let's continue. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. Watch this. Watch this. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Lord, we praise your holy name. We glorify in your name. We believe, Lord, what we just read is still true today. Our God is fighting for us. We are victorious all the way through. All we've got to do is just trust God, stay calm in him, and he will show us that he means business to his word. We thank you, God. Oh, we thank you today in your precious and holy name. Everyone say amen. 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 Praise his holy name. So we're in Exodus today, and we're going to take a look also into, into Acts we're looking at this, this incredible common, commonness, a uh, parallel of, of God's word in Exodus, what took place here for Moses and, the, and with the Egyptians and with God's people, and then what God did for his people in, the, in Acts for Pentecost. So here we go. Hey, I hope you're buckled in. This is good stuff today. You, you, you believe that, right? So as we look to those words, let me just read it one more time. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians, Egyptians you see today, that means the enemy that you see today. You're seeing with your eyes. You're hearing them coming after you. You see the dust boiling up over the earth, you know something's coming against you and it isn't a happy reception. It's, it is your enemy that's bearing down on you. You're not going to see them ever again is what God's word says. Verse 14, the Lord himself will fight for you. That's God saying this through Moses to the nation of Israel. God will fight for you. Doesn't mean you just stand still and do nothing. You got to keep believing, keep trusting. You got to stay active in your faith. You don't cross your arms and say, okay, God, do your deal. No, you got to stay at it. You got to keep believing and trusting and hungering for God's presence and God's glory, God's power that's, that's going to be manifest right there in your situation. That's what's going on. God had a plan here. When it comes to human beings and their, their understanding or their, their, anal, their analyzing of what's happening around, that doesn't seem to be a very good plan. We're talking about the, the, the world's most powerful army of that day is bearing down on God's people with everything that they've got. Everything that has taken place prior to this moment, it has caused Pharaoh to be so, so angry. He hates Moses. He hates the nation of Israel. And he's come to that place where he hates their God. He wants to annihilate them. He wants to, he doesn't want a memory. All these plagues, my goodness, he's lost his firstborn child. Think about it. I've had enough of these people. It's time to take care of business. It's time to get rid of these folks. I, we don't need them around any longer. So here are, are, the, are the, 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 uh, God's people being bared down upon of the enemy. You know, when we're facing difficulties in life, trials in life, pains, losses in life, those are defining moments for us, aren't they? They really do define who we are, 
by how we respond to them. What, what we allow those things to do to us. Will we allow those things to cause us more harm? Will, will we allow the difficulties and the pains of life cause us to turn away from where we should be and begin to go in another direction? Or are we looking for happiness and joy? Or are, we, are we looking for fulfillment elsewhere when times get tough or we don't understand what's going on? Where, where, where are we looking when things go not the direction we would like for them to go? Defining moments. So in this defining moment, when it comes to Moses, Moses, again, being entrusted by God to take care of his people, to lead his people, all of these people who are so compliant. You didn't get that, did you? There wasn't a whole lot, whole lot of compliance, let me tell you. There wasn't a whole lot of, of happiness and joy amongst these people. Everybody, everybody had an opinion. Everybody had an opinion, and they want it to be heard. Everybody had a plan, and they wanted their plan to be followed. They didn't like what was going on, and so they voiced what they wanted to happen from there. And we're not talking about a, just a small group of folks. We're, we're talking about several million people. So here is Moses in the midst of this, uh, this chaotic time, uh, term, turmoil, difficult, stress. What am I going to do now? It's a defining moment. Will, will he, will Moses be faithful to God really is the question. If you're taking any notes, is this going to be what, what Moses is defined by is, is he going to say, yes, God, no matter what? Or is he going to question God with this? What, which direction is he going to turn? He's got a lot of voices in his ear. He sees Pharaoh and all the enemy bearing down on him. What's he going to do? It says here in verse 10 of Exodus 14, As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and, and panicked, when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? You did this, Moses. Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. Let us be slaves to the enemy. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. What is Moses going to do? What will the people do? Can we, just, can we just get this right out, and out, out in front? Moses is God's man. Is he a perfect individual? Help me out. No, 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 not in the least. Is he the only one at fault here? Help me out. No. We're talking about a people that had turned their backs on God so much that there they were, they were slaves to their enemy. And they had been that way so long that, the, that what they saw, what they believed, and what they were accepting was, was this was the best. It's better to be a slave to the enemy than to be free and following God, even if Following God means going through difficult times, going through struggles, having to stay with it, stick to it, keep going, even if you come up against obstacles and struggles. But Moses said what we read to begin this morning, but Moses told them, he told those people, don't 
be afraid. Is it easy for us to receive that message when we are facing the difficulties of this life, when we are facing the enemy of our soul? Do do we find it difficult? Yes, we find it difficult to hear those kind of words. Don't be afraid. When you're scared to death, when you don't know what to do, Moses says, I know, I know what you're seeing, I know what you're hearing, I know what you've been through, I know what we've all been through. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. He's saying you got to believe. you got to believe that this God, this God of ours, who has never ever failed us, that he's not going to fail you today. You and I have got to be in that place. That we say, you know what? This may be tough. This may be lousy. I, I'm experiencing all this difficulty. I'm struggling here, but my God has never failed me, and he's not going to fail me today. Can, I, can you say amen to that? He's not going to. He won't do it. He won't because he's promised that he won't. He won't fail. Because he can't. Isn't that good, Bob? He can't fail, brother. Oh, my. The Egyptians you see today will never again be seen. That wasn't just a a small posse out there coming at. We're talking about thousands, tens of thousands, all, all the strongest and mighty warriors, all the greatest chariots and charioteers, all, all the very, everything that was at the disposal of Pharaoh was coming after the nation of Israel, the children of God. And don't you know, the enemy still does that today. He brings everything that he's got at his disposal against you and me. He will not stop. But the beauty of it is we've got a a history. We've got a past. We've got a heritage that our God, our Heavenly Father, has never, ever, ever come up short when his children will count on him, believe and trust in him, have faith in him. God always, always shows again that he is victorious over the enemy. Praise his name. (laughs) Just stay calm. It's it's hard for for a bunch of us folks who have anxiety to hear, isn't it? Just stay calm. (laughs) Just stay calm when everything around you is just going crazy. Pastor Mike referred to it. This world just at times seems to be going crazy. Just stay calm. How can we stay calm? It's holding on to the one that does not shake. He does not tremble. He does not lose his power. He he doesn't exhaust it. He's always, always, always poised and ready in victory. That's who we've got. That's who we've got to follow. Defining moment. Will he be faithful? Will you and I be faithful with what we face? Secondly is this. The defining moment for Moses became a defining moment for the nation of Israel, the children of God. So his personal defining moment becomes a defining moment for God's people. The question is, will they obey God? The question is for you and me. Will we obey? Will we hear what God is saying? And will we take it in? And will we follow through with it? Or will we receive it but say that doesn't make sense? That doesn't seem possible? Looking at my circumstances, I don't, I don't think that that's going to be able to work. Maybe that would work Back in the day, maybe that would work in someone else's issues and and crises, but I don't think that'll work with mine. See, that's that's really common, isn't it? 
That may work for somebody else. I don't think that can work for me. I, I believe God can do anything, but I don't know if he can really come through for this. This is way too big. This is way too much. I, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't see it happening. The Lord himself is fighting. The Lord himself isn't tucked away in some corner up in, up in the realms of glory somewhere hoping that whatever you and I are facing will, will just pass on itself. No, he is standing with us fighting for us. He wants us to know victory one more time, another time. And another time, he does not ever want us to get to a place that we would say, victory isn't going to happen here. we got to keep seeking the heart of God so that whatever is going on, whatever is coming our way, we can stand and we can say, victory is mine right now. Right now. And I'm not waiting on it. It's, it's, it's not a possibility. It's my reality right now. I don't know what, what's going to hit me. I, I don't know what I've got to go through. But victory is mine. That's with, the, with Moses and the nation of Israel. It's like victory is ours no matter what's coming up against us. Hmm. So watch this. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. Oh yeah, they were standing at the, at the banks of the Red Sea. Oh yeah, you can't just walk on water. Though with God they could have if that's what he provided, but he had another plan. They were hemmed in. <laughs> you know what that means? That means it would be like a, 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 a boxer up in a corner and can't get out, can't get away from the punches. Hemmed in. Can't get out of here. You ever been hemmed in on the interstate? Oh, yeah. It ain't happy, happy, happy for me when I get hemmed in out there. And that knows. I usually say, as kind as I can, would you get out of my way? <laughs> because where I want to be, I can't get there because I'm blocked and I'm hemmed in. The nation of Israel hemmed in. The only way to go is where the water is. And guess what? That was God's plan. God was going to provide a way. They didn't know how. But I tell you what, something took place. When Moses believed, as he, as he went to the water, he, he began to see God's work. God's activity was then beginning to happen. The winds blew. And by morning, when morning came, the, there, there, were, there were walls of water and there were, was dry ground from one side of the sea to the next. All right. By morning time, there were walls of water. And when the, as, as the walls of water were piled up, the ground, which was covered with water for who knows how long, it was now dry ground. And guess what? They got a path. They got a way through because God's a way maker. They were able to march through. Now understand this. Pharaoh and all of his cronies see what's gone on. But that doesn't stop them. They see the water piled up on both sides. They see the dry ground. They see the nation of Israel walking out there. And they keep coming. Well, all the nation of Israel gets across. God 
creates chaos for Pharaoh and all of his cronies. They all end up in the middle on the dry ground after the nation of Israel has crossed. And then, then Moses raises his arms again. That's a bad thing for the Pharaoh and all of his boys. And I don't know if there's girls, but for all who was out there with him. Because the first time he raised them up, the water went up. The second time he raised his arms up, the water comes down. God is making a path for you. God is making a path for you. But I tell you what, you can't see the path, nor can I, if I'm looking at the enemy coming after me. I've got to look in the direction of where God is working. He's making a path. So guess what? That's where I've got to go. Even if I've got fear all around me because water is piled up in water all around me, that would drown me if it came crashing down. But I've got to believe if there is a path that's been created from this side over to that side of the sea, it's for me because God wants me on that other side. I can't, I can't keep looking back. I know they're bearing down. I know they They've got some bad ideas if they get a hold of me, but I've got to go the path of God. Are you and I going to obey God at his victorious word and go the way of the path that he creates? Or are we just going to allow ourselves to live in fear, tremble, and allow the enemy that's bearing down to just take us over and we succumb to the enemy? For whatever reason we would think, or if I can just survive that, if I'm with the enemy, things will be better. Things will not be better with the enemy. Never ever has it been better with the enemy. The enemy will always promise, promise the moon to everyone. But once the enemy gets a hold, the enemy always mistreats, always abuses, always rakes you over the coals, always disturbs you, and always causes chaos. Because the enemy is after one thing and one thing only, and it's three parts, to steal, kill, destroy. So don't think for a second, going back, going back to the old life, going back to Egypt is going to be better. That's where the enemy is going to take you over again. God made you for a pathway through all the chaos, all, all, the, all the struggles. He made you to keep pressing on through. Amen? Instead of rationalizing, instead of making excuses, Instead of running away, Moses boldly proclaimed what God wanted his people to hear. Don't be afraid. This enemy, you'll never see him again. You be still. You be still. God is fighting for you. You be still. God is going to save you. God is going to provide for you. You just wait and see. Just be obedient. Oh my. And God will come through. Will you obey God all the way through? Will we obey God all the way through? A defining moment for you and me takes us another step. And with this, I'm going to close. A defining moment for the body of Christ, the birth of the church. Listen. Something took place on this day, as we commemorate it, a few thousand years ago. And this is what happened. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, 
there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard this, this loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. Just 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, here they are, this group of 120 or so, gathered in a room that Jesus, before he ascended back into heaven, told them to go. You go there and you wait. You wait because my God is going to send the comforter, the paraclete. And when, that, when the Holy Spirit comes and comes upon you, you will be empowered, endued with power. And you will be, as Jesus said, you will be able to do things far greater than I have ever done. I want you to see the, the commonness of this. Just like the nation of Israel being hemmed in, the enemy coming crashing in. Right before Jesus was crucified, the enemy was crashing in as well. Many of the disciples just completely deserted Jesus because when the enemy comes, comes in and there was fear that strikes followers, they have one of two decisions to make. Am I going to stay and be obedient or am I going to run away and protect myself? What God promised his children at the banks of the Red Sea is still what he promised them before Jesus ascended. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to provide for you exactly what you need. And what, what I'm going to send to you, you've got to have this. This is the only way you're going to be able to have victory in your life. This is the only way you're going to be able to continue this great commission that I've given you to fulfill. This is it. I'm going to provide for you. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. Are you going to face difficult times? Oh, yes. Some of you will die for the faith. That's, that's just the way it is. But you've got to know, you've got to know that I'm making a path for you. It may not look like what kind of a path that you would make for yourself. The circumstances surrounding it all may not at all appear to be what you would ever think or consider. But I'm going to provide a path for you. You're going to go, you're going to go across from this side to the next of this sea. You're going to go across. You're going to come out of this room that you've been gathered in and you've been waiting and being patient, but you're being faithful and calling upon my name. You're going to come out of this room right here and you're going to go out there. You're going to go out there amongst people that really don't like you. Some still want to kill you off, but you're going to go out there and I'm going to give you every word to say. The, the, the spirit that I'm going to pour into your life, it's going to come out of here and you're going to be speaking so that everyone in this whole whole city that are, that are from every nation, they're, they're going to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in their native tongue. I'm going to make a way for you. I'm going to make a way for you. Will you obey? Or will you make excuses? 
Will you persevere even when it's costly, even when it's painful, even when it's confusing? Will you keep pressing on or will you find a way to run away, hopefully to avoid pain or difficulty or, or being called out? Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm. Watch the Lord rescue you today. Those Egyptians, that enemy, you're not going to see them ever again. The Lord himself is going to fight for you. Just stay calm. Won't you stand with me? Steve, come on up to listen to this. I pray from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ though it may be too great to fully understand. Then will you be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God. All glory to God who is able. Listen who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Will you allow yourself to make the choice to obey God and go the way of the way maker? Will you step out onto the path that he's made? Will you step out of the room and become the witness that God has created you and poured in you the empowerment to be? I invite you this morning not to turn away from the path that he makes, to stay on it. I invite you to not hold up in, in a room for fear of what might be beyond the door. Step out there in God's power and let God be in and through you. Oh my, a convincing, convincing testimony to the world that God is is at work in you. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, to not fear the enemy that bears down. Lord, help us not to fear the path that you've created, even though it doesn't look like anything that we would have made for ourselves. God, help us to to keep our eyes fixed on you and believe your word so that we don't hold up in a room or run or make an excuse or run away, that we will step out under your leadership and empowerment to be everything that you want us to be. So Lord, if there is, if there is need in our life today, 
that we need to confess. If, if there is fear, Lord, that we are struggling with, if there is doubt, Lord, that we are battling against, if we don't know which way to turn right now, oh God, help us to look to you, to not focus on our enemy, not focus on our past, not focus on that back there that might be familiar. Oh God, help us. Help us to, to take a look toward you and look what you have done. Look what you've prepared. Look what you have made for us. This way that you've made for us. And you have promised all provisions, oh God, for us to fight the good fight of faith. For us to be a powerful witness that convinces those who hear you speaking through us that Jesus is alive, that God is real, that he is a way maker for everyone that will look to him, listen to him, and obey. As they begin to sing this morning, I invite you, if there is need in any area of your life, if you need to ask Jesus to forgive you today, today is a good day because he's here. If you're needing God's help to stay on the path, today's a really good day to, to ask him for strength and guidance. Wherever there is need in your life, I invite you to come this morning to this altar of prayer. If you can't kneel today, there, these front pews are open for you to, to come and sit, to, to draw yourself closer to God. And maybe there is someone the Lord places on your heart that needs prayer today. Someone who has, who has taken the wrong turn, who, is, who is, seems to be going in the direction of the enemy, going back to a former way of life, or, or seems to be cowering in fear in the corner somewhere, that, that they just need prayer. They need, pr they need God's intervention. They need us to believe in God's power for them. Someone needs saved. Someone needs sanctified. Someone that might need delivered. Someone that has a chain that's wrapped around their life. Maybe may, may addiction or past or failures or, or, or problems or financial burdens. Whatever it might be that God, God would show up and they would take notice that God wants to make a way for them. Begin singing, would you? Let's come. Let's come and Let's come and pray. Let's come and believe together. Let's come and trust him together.
and marvelous you are and Lord as you speak oh Lord your word is victorious to us your word is power to us your, li- your word is life giving to us and we glorify your name Lord we do we believe in what we have received from you today that we as your people we can believe and trust that you are fighting for us We can stand firm, oh God, right where we are and believe, God, that you're going to provide a way through where we are standing. We believe it, God, because you've never once failed anybody. And God, you've you've always shown that where people are wanting you, wanting to please and obey you, Lord, you always pour out an incredible blessing into the life, empowering them with your precious spirit. We praise the Holy Spirit today because it's the Holy Spirit that gives us the empowerment to live this life of Christ in this world. Thank you, Father. We praise your name. You are working. You are making a way. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory today, we do. In the precious and holy name of our risen Lord, Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Let's sing this as celebration together. Say 
set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for.